Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to your Arsenal Advisor. Um, this video is going to be about uh, crimp, case crimping when you're reloading. Um, one of the last steps you do um, on in reloading is you apply a crimp to the case mouth against the projectile you reloaded. Um, for some cartridges, you, you don't use a crimp because it can affect accuracy, such as uh, bolt action rifles um, or very powerful cartridges that, you know, if you have other rounds in, in the, the firearm that may recoil and then cause the bullet to move around and change their uh, position with respect to the rest of the case and the loaded with, with powder, etc. Um, so that's also a concern for, for uh, uh, firearms that aren't necessarily semi-automatic. The other reason to crimp cases is to keep specifically to keep your um projectiles from moving with respect to this case because they may be operated by the firearm itself in a semi-automatic or or automatic firearm where the mechanical pieces or parts of the firearm moving the, the the cartridges back and forth and they're banging into different parts of the uh the chamber as they're coming out of a magazine that's another kind of um situation um that use a crimp for. Um, so there's different kind of crimps and I have a, a drawing to kind of um, illustrate some of the some of the reasons between the different kinds of crimp. There's basically two kinds um, but there's different um, products uh, you know reloading products that apply the kind of crimps in, in different ways so I'll try to describe that. All right, let's talk about the crimp here. So we've got roll crimps, taper crimp. Roll crimp is where the shape of your crimp die curls like a roll uh, the edge of the case mouth into the projectile. Um, and that's done where there was uh, not so much concern for accuracy and also where like, like revolvers that uh headspace i'm using the word headspace you know the mod like the um the indexing or definition of the length of the case with respect to where the you know the chamber and and the barrel is um headspace is usually a, a, a distance from like the bolt face to the uh end of the case it's different between bottleneck cartridges and straight wall cartridges um but um this is more pronounced, this rolling uh, curve into the projectile. Uh, some projectiles have a, uh, a crimping groove. This is like a rifle cartridge. This is like a pistol, pistol cartridge or pistol projectile, rifle type projectile. You'll, you'll see this referred to as a crimping groove or a cannelure. Um, and you're supposed to kind of aim the um, case mount to be right uh, so that candler is right there and provides some space for the uh, the brass to roll into or in this case the taper crimp you have more of a gradual reduction in the um, circumference and diameter of the uh, case mount um, but it's also recommended to do at, at a groove now certain um, uh, die uh, reloading die manufacturers um, they don't they say you don't require to have a crimping groove because it says it'll make it uh, it, uh, it'll make it for um, your projectile by just creating that um, at the time of crimping um, so there's there's a couple different things I was reading my lime and reloading manual and they describe a, um, a no crimp or a crimp situation and their no crimp is uh, for projectile or cartridges where you, you, you need utmost accuracy uh, because they say the crimping you know grips the, the projectile and deforms it a little bit in some cases and I guess that can affect your accuracy in some way I'm not sure it's because the cartridge deforms whether it's as it's spiraling through the air or whether it's uneven and 
affects the as it's going down the barrel. I haven't got that far into it. Um, so that's lime and it's kind of a no crimp or crimp. And they say you crimp for the sort of the same reasons other manufacturers recommend to use crimp, which I'll get into. Um, so certain revolver cartridges have a rim and they head space off the rim in the back of the cylinder, kind of like I depict over here. Imagine a, a six shooter, you know, revolver uh, where you had like six cylinders um, and then you had the back of the cylinder like this. You know, that's going to define where the cartridge is ready to where the, the projectile will come out. So a roll crimp is used and that's not going to take away from its position in the cylinder. For, um, and that's not a semi-automatic type of cartridge. Uh, now with respect to um, why crimps are used, uh, the main reason is to keep the projectile stable with respect to where it is in the uh, cartridge. Because like semi-automatic firearms, they can they, they push the cartridges you know into the chambers and they can hit different physically hit different parts of the uh, chamber as it comes out of the magazine. Uh, so you can have your projectile shoved further into the case and that can create dangers. Um, you reduce the case volume uh, when your um, powder is going to be ignited and that can cause a dangerous situation. So you want you want to try to like provide a little extra pressure from that crimp to keep, keep the projectile where it's at. Um, so that occurs in straight walled semi-automatic type pistols as well as this is really a drawing of a chamber, but it looks like a bottleneck cartridge. So there's, you know, bottleneck cartridges in semi-automatic and automatic firearms. So that's what, uh, you know, I got to think about. But with respect to, um, let's back up a little bit. So I read about Lyman, you know, they make a lot of equipment. And I use the Dillon RL550B, and they use, they provide a taper crimp. And when you look at their instructions, it doesn't really, it says that, you know, the taper crimp, can preserve accuracy because it puts a slight, you know, it's a slight reduction. do not really elaborate on it. Uh, I just wanted to make sure before I started this video to see what it said. Um, but with respect to like uh, semi-automatic pistols, the headspace, they say it headspace is on the front mouth of the um, cartridge case. That hits the, um, right up against where the, uh, the barrel starts. So you don't want to roll in the edges because the the projectile or the, the I'm sorry the cartridge case may not hit the uh, end of the, the end of the barrel or the beginning of the barrel where it's supposed to stop any forward motion of the cartridge. Um, so the taper crimp, you know, you set it so it slightly reduces the the circum circumference, and which you know you can measure the reduction diameter of the um, of the projectile uh, and, and you know the outside while well, you measured on the outside of the case um, so straight wall revolver non semi-automatic um, you would use uh, you can use roll crimp uh, tape crimp will also work but another thing to think of with the revolvers is lever action firearms where you have Many times it's also pistol ammunition, like your uh, 357 Magnums, your 44 Magnums, um, and whatever else have you. You know, the, 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 the cartridges are all in a line, and a lot of times you'll find that that's why those projectiles are blunt, so that in different recoil and you know, accidental motions, that the bullets don't set off the primers of the, uh, the cartridges in front. Um, so roll crimping is probably the most secure because it's the most um, the most radical uh, deformation of the case mouth compared to a straight wall or a taper crimp um, and over here I depict sort of a chamber of a straight wall pistol semi-automatic kind of firearm um, right up here by the barrel where you can see some rifling depiction um, so you want this edge of the brass to be still you know, sharp so it can kind of engage this surface. Um, now with respect to um, a bottleneck cartridge, the headspace occurs 
in the middle of where the shoulder area is of a cartridge, and it's measured down to the bolt, the face of the bolt, that, you know, this bolt will move in and out uh, on semi-automatic firearms, um, as well as bolt actions. Um, you know, but with the bolt action rifles, you know, your hand can carefully, you know, move the bolt back and forth to pick up ammunition, so there's less of a violent uh, action that you get with the semi-automatic firearms. Um, so, but I just wanted to point out the headspace dimension is usually it's halfway, wherever halfway is with respect to where the uh, face of the bolt is, that dimension. Uh, there's usually a little space between where the barrel starts and where the lands and grooves start. Um, so the neck of the mouth of the case, or the mouth of the case there, the neck of the cartridge also would possibly engage here, but I think usually you reload your cases so there's still a little bit of room. You would be under the headspace and your cartridge might be just inside the headspace that your uh, chambers um, reamed to. But anyway, so we got roll crimps and taper crimp. Now the Dillon equipment I have, uh, it's like a continuous circle. When I look down into the die, it's a continuous circle um, that just, when you set the die at the particular height, it'll put that slight taper in. You know, the more, the deeper down you adjust it. Now, the one that's in the video is a Lee Precision uh, die. They call it the factory crimp and it's got an internal collet that's relieved in four areas, evenly spaced, and depending upon how you set it, when you, you push the uh, cartridge up into it, um, those sections kind of come together and they make that crimp. And again, you, you adjust it to just to get enough as you need. And I personally try to use as little crimp as possible because I just want that security of the, um, the what a crimp provides but not so much that I'm really deforming in these cases. Uh, actually, the, the Lee Precision in, um, instructions say that it's okay if you don't have a crimping groove, the die will make it as it, as it crimps. Um, so that's almost opposed to what you read in the Lyman manual where it says you shouldn't crimp on projectiles that don't have a crimping groove. Um, you know, so there's there's a... You can see a different philosophy in the different manufacturers. So um, the Dillon equipment that I started reloading with, you know, has a taper crimp, comes with the rifle dies, and it doesn't say you need to have a crimping groove or any of that. Um, so you, and you can you can set those with as little crimp. Um, you can, you know, or more or less crimp, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I just wanted to kind of like demonstrate that. Um, so we got the roll crimp with much more crimp, taper crimp where you just have a little little constriction in of that um, the diameter there, whether you have a cantilever or crimping groove or not, um, you know, because you got a straight wall type chamber. Similar thing is going on with the bottleneck cartridge, just know that head space is, is off of midway off the shoulder. Um, but usually in your rifle cartridge, you're, you're going for accuracy. But if you're using a semi-automatic, you want accuracy, but you also want the security of your projectile so you don't have uh, pressure problems. Um, all right, so that's, uh, that's it for the, the graphics. Um, go ahead and just next up, I'll, I'll tee up. I actually got one video where I, you can kind of see the, um, the Lee Precision crimp die with the, the little collet kind of crimping in and the little divisions between the different sections kind of coming together as they crimp around that dummy projectile I made or dummy cartridge. Um, and then the rest of the video is just kind of the steps of me setting the die with a little bit of trial and error um, as I move the die down and measure the, uh, the case mouth as it, as it constricts. All right, watch those uh, four grooves in the center of the crimp die, watch them come together. And that was, uh, that's how I have it set. That's the amount of motion that's needed to make the uh, crimp on that. That's the particular uh, 6.8 SBC round I've been working with lately. 
that was the dummy round that I, I put in there. Okay, here we have the uh, the the Lee the Precision Incorporated factory crimp die. Um, so instructions say to raise the ram all the way up and screw the um, die all the way down. Until it touches the shell plate. Which is about here. And this says plus. Actually, I have to loosen that ring. Okay, so it's all the way down. It says go half a, half a turn more, but it also says try for the minimal amount of crimp. And I agree with that statement, but that means I should probably back the die out and then just by trial and error, check the um, diameter of the case mouth as I use the crimp, um, crimping die. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, another point, this uh, lock ring's got a rubber O-ring, so it just kinda locks down by, by I guess, says to tighten it finger tight. Um, so I'll probably use that and maybe, maybe that uh, Leatherman tool to kind of hold the, the, the knurled top of the uh, die. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the diameter of the case mouth as close to the edge as I can that's basically where the crimp is going to be occurring. So I'm getting 0 0.299 or 98 inches and I'm going to check I'm going to check for uh, what a recommended crimp is um, because before I've tried to add a thousandth in the crimp I think I've seen something as, as large as uh, three thousandths um, the diameter reduction via crimp as a recommendation, but I'm of the philosophy of um, using as little as possible. I don't want to over deform the projectile by crimping, but I want some security to kind of guard against the, the projectile moving with semi-automatic um, firearms. We'll see, maybe you can get a little bit more since there's a, this cantilever in the uh, projectile allow some space for um, you know, the crimping to occur without as much pressure as if you were to get that same amount of crimp with a full uh, non-relieved uh, jacket surface of the projectile. Okay, so right up on crimping and my Lyman 49th uh, edition manual listed a whole list of calibers and gave a, a diameter and for 270 and 6.8 SPC, it just listed a diameter 0.277 inches. And in the manual, you'll find things like that. Uh, they call it the groove diameter. Um, it's not exactly the information I was I thought I'd read uh, before, where it said you can crimp like three thousandths. It just gave a specific number. Now these are at 0.298 inches, so. We'll see if I can get down to 0.295 or, or something like that. I don't know if I'm going to try to crimp it all the way down to 0.277 inches. But it may also depend upon how close I get to the shell plate and how this particular die um, you know, sets up in, in the tool head. Because I don't want to do it excessively. So we'll move it down gradually and then keep measuring it. And right now we're at the uh, starting dimension, 0.298 inches. Let's turn it a little. No change.
no change. The reason I didn't want to follow the directions explicitly in this case is because it basically has you adjust the die all the way down to where there would be no, I mean, that would be the, the maximum amount of uh, lowering of the die towards the uh, the case. So wouldn't be able to start from a, a further out length and move in with the like slightly increasing pressure. You know, to get the slightly decreasing diameter in the crimp. All right, haven't got there yet. I didn't make any changes. Try to go uniform. I'm using these little teeth on the side of this lock ring to try to. It felt like a little bit of resistance, but yeah, I used the teeth just to try to make some uniform adjustments. Not quite there yet. It's almost a quarter turn. So I'm going to stop this and just kind of go by trial and error till I get where I need to be. Okay, so I got a uh, crimp of 0 0.29, 0 0.290 inches. So it's greater than 0.277, um, but it's got a... Uh, it's got the little gaps because uh, the inside the collet, um, there's uh, four sections that um, kind of close in together to make that crimp, and and you can tell it's working because you can see that it's almost like a I'm trying to figure out. I saw somebody in a video you put a hand up in front so that the camera would focus in on what he was looking at or showing. Um, kind of, I was trying to do that here. All right, watch those uh, four grooves in the center of the crimp die. Watch them come together. And that was, uh, that's how I have it set. That's the amount of motion that's needed to make the uh, crimp. Okay, so... You can see the line from the crimp. It's got a little line parallel to the case mouth, and you get the gap between the little sections and the interior collet. Um, it looks like a good bit. It's a taper crimp, so that's good. Um, probably safe, but I'm going to try to back it off a little bit to see what that gets me. Okay, kind of move. I was moving in increments of five of these teeth, and I backed it up like a couple, a couple teeth. You can feel the uh, the crimping force. So you can see the line. A little mark. Okay, so what I did was I, I tightened this down finger tight while the last cartridge was up inside the uh, the die. That's what the direction is said to do. Um, it's supposed to help it lock it in place better. So that second set of uh, that's in the wrong area. Put it under. I should put it under here. Um, and then to see what that, what that yields, see if it retains the same amount of crimp. Okay. 
I can see the crimping marks. Let me go ahead and measure it. Okay, so they're they're crimping down to 0 0.295 inches. It's about four to three to four thousandths less than when they started. I don't want to crimp it all the way down to 0 0.277. Um, just wanted to put enough on so I could evaluate the uh, performance of the cartridges with a crimp because I'll, for regular um, reloading, I'll, I'll tend to want to crimp on it. I had thoughts about uh, comparing the um, operation um, on non-crimp versus crimped, but I always use crimp, so I, I determined I really need to try both out. Um, Trying to really see if there's a particular load that will operate the 6.8 SBC carbine. You know, my particular one with 18 inch barrel. Um, you might see some other videos of mine I was having issues with it. So this is the, the I'm looking for a solution. So I had two two different powders, and um, there's one set with two different charges. All right now, um, just talking about this crimp, I just uh, kind of held it with my fingers. I used uh, the Leatherman tool a little bit to kind of push this lock ring down. It's being forced against an O-ring that's providing a lot of the friction. I think it's pretty, pretty stable, um, but it's a little different than what I'm used to. Kind of used to um, the Dillons. They just have a lock ring. You just move the die up and down and lock it in place. Um, you know, this other method seems to have a little room for um, needing to maybe go double check it or you know, it's just I don't know if it's as locked as firm firmly as the other ones. All right, here we are. We're at the end of the video. Um, that's crimping, case crimping. When I started putting this video together, I didn't really think it was gonna have this much material. Um, just like, oh, okay, I use crimp, and this is how you set the die and all that, but it's pretty important to know what kind of crimp you need um, if you're not gonna use it. Uh, I mean, some of the manuals, it says how it's optional. So if you're not gonna do it, you need to know why you're not doing it and make sure that you're not leaving it out when you should be using the crimp. Um, and then when you do use the crimp, you want to make sure how much to use and when you just want to use just only a little bit of, of crimp. Um, you know, we mentioned the different kind of cartridges and where they headspace and um, why you're using the crimp. Um, so, you know, you use very, you can look at different, different, you'll get different data from different manufacturers, you know, for different equipment they make. Um, and like, you know, there's different philosophies of, you know, when you don't crimp or when you do crimp and others, you know, they think you can use the crimp a little bit without, you know, um, affecting the accuracy as much. So, you know, you got, you got the stability of the cartridge in semi-automatic and fully automatic farms versus leaving off the crimp when you have, you know, a slower action when you want to preserve the utmost accuracy. But with the one caveat that you might be in the heavy duty cartridge in a bolt action but if you're going to carry more of the ammunition while it's recoiling you may have to once again guard against the uh, movement of projectile due to the re like a heavy recoil um, so again just look into crimping make sure you know what you need and then how much of it that you do need so i hope this uh video has helped and uh think about subscribing uh, and i have some contact information on the end pane so again thanks for watching